Yo guys, I'm here with another another player from United Gozos and Bobby, what did you do today? I went 11-1 in Swiss at YCS uh, Bologna, came third after Swiss and unfortunately lost in top 64. Okay, okay. And what did you play today? I played a pure snake eye as a minute. Okay, nice. So let's get into it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's so we'll start with the main. Uh, so... I mean, not much to say about the uh, starters. I did play uh, max consistency. Yeah. So I played 15 starters uh, and I played 40 cards in my uh, main deck. Um, I felt like if I had to play the Kashtira engine or the Finsmith engine or play crossouts in my main, I had to go above 40. And I felt like this deck can't really go second that well when you're playing more than 40 cards. I wanted to see a lot of my power hand traps and a lot of my hand traps. Um, so yeah, I, I decided to go for max like, consistency, 40 cards with uh, 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 15 starters. Okay, okay. So that was the starters. Um, then obviously some of the engine requirements. Uh, I did choose to play two oak. Uh, the second oak came up a lot. Um, I'm playing pure, and how my combo is as well. I, I end on uh, the uh, the hope uh, uh, harbinger, uh, which means that I don't get my flame burge uh, recursion. So very often I would try to to end my turns with uh, the uh, the OSS engrave so that I can search the oak, put back the poplar, and then go oak ash poplar on my follow up turn, just in case. Um, it also comes up because I'm playing. One for one, three bonfires, and I'm playing 40 cards. Yep. Uh, the two oaks definitely came up quite a bit for me. Um, and it's also like a pseudo starter sometimes. Like if you start with Witch plus the uh, the oak, the oak lets you full combo through one hand trap, which is really nice. And I, and I needed more ways to full combo through yep. one hand trap. So. Uh, then obviously uh, the rest of the engine requirements. Not much to say there. Uh, then I played one uh, call by. Uh, I felt like this card was just like really good into this this format right now where there's like a lot of hand traps There's a lot of hand traps that really hurt me uh, and so, since I'm playing 40 cards like I do, you know See it a bit more often uh, and I did see it quite a bit actually. I was pretty happy when I drew it I called by shifters and foils yeah, and trolls okay. and so uh, yeah, it was it was it was a pretty good uh, a card for me and I actually keep it in going second quite often as well because my deck has a bit of a hard time playing through like half boards even sometimes and called by really helps with that and it's also just really good in some matchups going second like Fire King and uh, Ubel and some other matchups so uh, uh, called by was great. Uh, do you wish like this comes back like to two or to three um, <laughs> next ban list or something like? Well, I wasn't playing when this card was at more than one, so I can't yeah. really I can't really give like a reasoned opinion on okay. how it feels when it's at three or two. But there are a lot of really good hand traps coming out yeah. right now, so I could see I could see co co okay. coming, coming back. back yeah. yeah. Um, then I played seventeen hand traps. So I played, like I said, fifteen starters and then seventeen hand traps. That was basically like the basis for the deck. Um, so three Fulos, three Ash, three Droll. Not much to, to say there. The Drolls were actually very, very, very good for me. Um, yeah. I turn, turn skip like a lot of people with Droll. They would go like planet, search like unicorn, and I would Droll them and they'd be like, oh my god. Oh my god. They'd be like, like terraforming. And yeah, Droll was actually quite good for me. Um, and then three Emperor. And then the reason that I'm not playing any cash cards or Fiend Smith cards is uh, Dominus Impulse. Probably the most impactful card uh, of the weekend for me, to be honest. Like, even when I drew two, this card was fantastic. That's also a pseudo breaker, no? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it's a pseudo breaker, which is really important for my deck because I'm playing pure and, like, my deck can't usually break boards. But funny enough, I actually, <laughs> round one, I broke a, a double Cosmic Blazar and a Solemn Judgment, which okay, like, that's... My, <laughs> my deck, like, never does that. I have no idea how, how it happened. He probably didn't play it right, I'm not sure, okay. but, <laughs> but, yeah, but it was pretty good. insane, though. Um, and then the last two cards in my deck are more hand traps. Uh, they're hand traps so that I can uh, hit with a cross out. Um, I crossed out Ghost Ogre like twice, yeah. and I don't think I crossed out Valor, uh, but I don't really regret playing Valor. Um, there, was, there were quite a bit of people playing it. Um, I don't think I would have changed anything in the main. Um, Maybe the one for one, but like, like I did win one game because of one for one letting me keep playing. Um, 
The other times, one for one was just kind of like chilling in my hand, but in games that I won anyways. Uh, but I guess it could have been, maybe been something else, but I really did want to try to go for the max like, consistency. Okay. So. Uh, to the extra deck, um, so obviously the, the Raging Package. Um, I played Double Princess, so we knew that there was going to be a lot of Cash Tira Unicorn at, at this event. Yeah. Uh, so Double Princess literally felt like like mandatory once I realized that. Um, so yeah, that, that was that was there. Uh, Nightmare Phoenix, Dark, Hita, SP, IP, obviously the rest of your Link 2s, very important. Uh, then there's the Relinquished Anima, obviously. Uh, the two Azamina Fusions. Uh, and like I said, my end board ends on the whole Harbinger. Palmetra, yeah, yeah uh, so funny story, uh, last round. My opponent is under like a lot of pressure to like win because uh, there's like 30 seconds left on the clock, and he summons Lacrima. Lacrima dumps, and he ends up he equips uh, uh, Requiem to the Lacrima, and he makes Necro Equip. And right away, I realize what he's trying to do. He's trying to just go like Caesar, swing over my Zelantis for game because we're under time. But little does he know, like Harbinger has a hidden effect, yeah. and so he <laughs> literally, effect he literally Harbinger. goes battle phase and I'm like oh my god he's actually gonna do this and he's like swinging to Zelanthus I'm like redirected to the whole Harbinger and he just like <laughs> he was so he was so sad like it he was, was so flabbergasted it was brutal yeah, <laughs> it was flabbergasted crazy. he could not believe what happened yeah um, sorry that actually wasn't last round it was the second to last round so oh, he was okay. like oh my god like I might not not uh, top now because of that oh, okay. and so yeah so but I was literally saying as like a part of the reason for playing the whole Harbinger is that I felt like like on DB it probably happened 20 to 25 times that people go battle phase and try to swing over my IP, my Sylvia, my my SP, they completely forget about that effect. Like they just do not read Hope Harbinger. And so it kind of gains like a little bit more power just based off of that. Uh, so yeah, that was fun. Read your cards, guys. Um, and then two cards that I didn't even really need to play. Um, Typhon never came up. It should have been second SP. I lost games because I wasn't playing second SP. I lost my top 64 match because I wasn't playing second SP. Uh, I wish I had. It would have helped me quite a bit. Um, unfortunately, didn't. So. <laughs> and uh, Fucho, uh, it did come up for me once. It won me a game versus uh, Tenpai, so I am happy that I had it. Uh, whenever you get shifter, it is a decent backup plan. It's very often not going to win you the game, but it can. And just the fact that it can, and since I had the extra deck space because I'm playing pure, uh, I figured yeah. it, was, it was a worthy AP. Another uh, side deck. And then for the side deck, yeah, so three Perulia. Uh, so, like, my deck is not the best going second unless I draw my power hand traps. So, like, I need to draw my fools, my Perulia, my drills, and etc. to, like, stop them because I'm not playing cash cards, you know? Uh, so, yeah, Perulia felt very, very mandatory, and it was very, very good for me to second. Like, very good. Um, I play one nib for the cross out. Uh, I mean, it also just kind of is good in certain matchups going first in general. Um, I only would side it in going second versus like Ritual Beast, maybe like a few other matchups, like really not that many matchups going second just because it does conflict with the uh, Dominus Impulse, but I did feel like I wanted it for the cross outs. Uh, so, speaking of cross outs, I've been talking about cross outs. Yeah, the cross outs. Yeah. <laughs> They're in my side deck. Uh, this car these cards were amazing for me. I won a lot of games with cross out. Um, I would I would constantly get like hand trapped. I would let that one go and then I would cross out the second hand trap and that would usually be it. Uh, so yeah, I yeah, cross outs fantastic. I would not mean it though, because then you have to go either above 40 cards or you can't play as many hand traps or starters. And I felt like for a 12 round event like uh, Bologna, like I yeah, that yeah, just exactly. wasn't really gonna exactly. work for me. And like cross outs on uh almost dead going second uh, my, yeah, most like, of the time. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like, especially with the way that I built my deck, cross out wouldn't really help me going second very often because like, I would still have a hard time playing through half boards even if I have to cross out like a hand trap. I'd rather that card either be a hand trap to like really stop my opponent or just be more gas, honestly. Yeah. Like, like, my best hands going second are like when I open like Wanted, like Original, Deception, and I just have gas like for days with like the Bonfire and like Oak and etc. So, um, so like I just want hand traps and starters. That's that's all. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Thirty seconds. Um, I played three Cosmics. This is for uh, coverage. Um, Runix, Labs, uh, Centurion. Uh, this has a lot of great applications going first versus like a lot of matchups. Like like uh, 
uh, like uh, Yubel and Fire Kings and etc. Uh, the card was pretty good for me actually today. I'd say, um, yeah, would not have would not have changed that. Uh, talents. This is probably the one. This is like the flex spot in uh, my extra deck. I felt like um, it could have been like another cross out target slash like another hand trap for going second. I actually didn't really side in talents that much to be honest. Um, I I felt like it would come up more, but just like the way that some of my matches were going, I ended up feeling like talents was like just like like a worse option sometimes than like Cyclone going first even. Um, so I probably wouldn't play the talents again. This was probably like, this and the uh, Typhon were probably my two like regrets, I guess you could okay. say. Uh, and then Skill Drain, because it's a dot card, I won basically every game that I that I resolved it, um, except for my last one. But my last one was because of time. It wasn't, oh, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was because of time. Uh, and then 3D Barrier. Um, so, Threatening Roar is better versus Tenpai, but D-Barrier covers more uh, matchups. I really don't like Thrust. Uh, thrust can get Delta, it can get Ashed. Uh, they might they might Brick, and then you just have like Thrust, and then if you Brick, or, or if you even didn't Brick, but if you can't kill through their hand traps because they Bricked, I'd much rather just have D-Barrier than have a yeah. Thrust. Like, if I have Thrust and they Bricked, then like if they hand trap stop me like I want to just like set the barrier and say go I, I, I don't want to have a dead thrust in my hand I don't want my thrusts to get ashed or or, or a delta or etc uh, so yeah went, went with the D barrier um, I, I don't think I ever actually resolved this card to be honest I I don't think I even drew it <laughs> <laughs> okay I that's good I drew it yeah even but though I, like I did play versus like a lot of tempies <laughs> okay like, that's I crazy five yeah. tempies and I don't think I drew it once um, but yeah, it's a good card though. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's my list. Yeah, it's a great deck, man. And any shout outs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I want to give a shout out, obviously, to my team. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The gang, the gang. The gang. The gang. <laughs> that's nice. Uh, that's yeah, nice. and uh, I want to give a shout out to Mario D'Amico, who I recently came here with. Uh, he made top four again for the fourth time in a row, so a huge shout out to him. Honestly, best player in the world right now, I think. Uh, the way that he plays Tenpai, like, he literally put me through, like, the hyperbolic time chamber, this guy, like, with, with like, Tenpai. Like, I feel like once I faced him, I, I could face anybody playing with <laughs> So, uh, yeah, huge shout-out to him, and then huge shout-out to the uh, Cooking Lab uh, group chat, my group chat from back home. And, uh, yeah, shout-out to all the guys back home in uh, Montreal. Okay. Dan, thanks, Bobby. Thank, thank you for the deck profile, and we'll see you again. Thanks so much.